Hi everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna dish my uh, front end framework. I'm gonna stick with React. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah. Um, just a fun fact first before we, not really a fun fact, but it's a fact. My first ever Singapore JS attendance was here, like last year, in uh, S uh, SB Digital. I still remember all the talks, like the first guy I talked about how he created a game using motion tracking and sent, uh, TensorFlow using the webcam so you can drive your car with your head. And <laughs> the second one is a super impressive demo about Vue.js, uh, yeah, live demo about Vue.js by uh, Divya, aka the short div, if you remember her. And the last one is also super interesting, is about Selenium replacement created uh, by XDBS on the trip in Europe that he just, you know, traveling on the, on the trip, trying new things and created that. So I was thinking, wow, this is, these guys are so cool. I, 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 gotta, I gotta find something, you know, worth sharing. And finally today, I'm so happy to be here. And uh, in SP Digital again, my first ever talk in uh, Singapore JS. So thank you to SP Digital for hosting this, and thank you all the organizers for giving me the slot. All right. Um, let me ask you one question first. If your boss tell you that you are going to give them a components library, would you love to have that in your team? Please raise your hand if, if you love it. All right, yeah. Uh, oh, let, let's try another one. Okay, if your boss say that the components library will be customizable, will be custom to your needs, it based on your brand identity and your design system, so you don't need to customize a lot. You don't. It's not something like Material UI where it's super generic. So would you love it even more? Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. And what if your boss say that you are gonna be given it for free. Who will love it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> it's free. Come on. Okay, okay. That's very enthusiastic. So of course it's not free. You can't get the conference library for free. So today I'm gonna talk about how we crafted our developing experience in the component age. But before I started, let me introduce myself first. My name is Eric. I work for Rakuten Viki as a front-end engineer. Uh, we build Rakuten Viki, the global video on demand platform, uh, focusing on con uh, Asian content and with a strong community of fans who actually watch and subtitle their own shows. Besides Viki, we also, uh, build, uh, we also have Sunpi, which is the biggest K-pop community in the world and a newly introduced sport live streaming service called Rakuten Sports. And all these are powered by React. So as we started to build our reusable UI components, um, I would love to, be, to, to share with you our learning experience and how we approach it. I will start with uh, how we approach uh, from the overall structure, then how we start developing as fast as we can, the main component development workflow, and the last thing is about building and publishing your components. So first thing first, over a structure, we want our component to be as isolated, as reusable as possible, right? And we also want like the developers that consume our components to, you know, to be able to just pull that component that what he or she needs. So how do you do that? The first thing in mind is, how about using a multiple repository, like all the components or the group of related components can be put in a single repository, like for each of them. But what's the problem with this? The code base is diverse. It's very hard to maintain on your legacy code can be easily like left behind or like that code elimination is kind of impossible. 
or very hard to do. Um, code consistency is another problem because uh, all your code is scattered among different re repositories. So like, it's very hard to you know, keep in track of, of all the code standard that you, your team is using. And the same problem with linting, uh, building and release scripts where you need to separate it in all your repositories. And, and all these scripts can be very similar and even identical. And of course, when you need to do something, you need to change something that related to multiple view components, you might need to have a cross repository effort and uh, you need multiple requests just for a simple change. So, uh -uh, there's no way we can do with that. We can go with that. How about the single repository? What's the, what's the problem? So this is actually what we started with. We build everything with a single bundle. Um, for, uh, it's just like, just like how you uh, import like bootstrap in your, in your code. You need, to, you need the bootstrap.css and bootstrap.javascript and it's, it's the same thing. But the build script for, all your, uh, for your single repository must handle every single cases of different components, which might be very diverse and very flexible. So it's, it becomes more and more complicated over time. And more components means the bigger bundle size because, yeah, it's just more code. And of course, more merge conflict because it's a single code base is uh, not very, very good separation of concerns. So, so the solution for, for all that is to use a monorepo for components library. So what are the good things about monorepo? Um, anyone doesn't know about monorepo here? Um, oh, awesome, awesome. So basically monorepo is when you uh, put your every, uh, multiple packages, JavaScript packages, or it doesn't even need to be JavaScript, but you put multiple packages in the same code base where the mini repos can be versioned, built, or published independently. The other good thing is that you can share configs. So it just basically improve your code consistency without you knowing that. So to enable that, we have Learner. It's a tool for managing JavaScript projects with multiple packages. Um, so you can imagine if you want to run tests on like 10 packages, you can just run Learner run tests. So it will also run your tests in a, basically all your packages. Uh, Learner also help with building and uh, publishing your, your, your JavaScript package, as you can see here. So uh, it's just way more convenient for you to do that. And also, uh, with Learner setup, you can actually use your packages in another package. So for example, here uh, we have some package that actually consume our other package called vkyy slash styles. And the next thing about this is try to use Jan and his workspace. So uh, who is the NPM fans here? Ooh, okay, awesome. Uh, <laughs> So anyone are uh, using Yarn and uh, are using using uh, NPM and thinking of a move to Yarn? That's even better. Yes. So yeah. So uh, why why Yarn here? Um, so Luna helps helps you to uh, like to give you tools and uh, wrap around all your NPM or Yarn scripts to help you manage your mono repo way easier. But it's just a wrapping. It doesn't do any optimization. So for example, when you install your uh, the dependencies for all your packages uh, and using NPM, what does it do? It's just going to install all the packages for every single small mini packages in your, um, in your repo. But Yarn and its workspace feature 
it's actually analyze your whole uh, packages dot um, package dot JSON files of every single package that you have in your code base. Try to build a sim link between all the common dependencies, so that actually each of your dependency will be installed only once. So that will save us tons of time and space as well installing your npm uh, your node modules. Um, yeah, so we got a we got a base structure. We have a monorepo using Luna and uh, and with the help of Yarn Workspace, is uh, pretty uh, scalable and pretty like concrete right now. And imagine that we know what the component looks like now. How do we start developing faster? Because we want to focus on our components, right? Like when you have a new component, what do we do? We just, of course, we try to share configs, but there are something that must be shared, uh, that must be repeated between like different components. For example, like some configuration, and uh, maybe it's just your decision to, to really repeat it. And of course, the directory structure is also repeated like how you put your source file, how you put your test file, so that, so that your build tools and uh, your build script can run across all the packages. So we don't want to repeat all this. And uh, what do you do? Any idea? What do we do for this case? How do we, uh, how do we create a new component if we have like some basic, some existing components? Exactly, scaffolding. So we are engineer. We must be lazy, right? We don't copy and paste. We just generate them. Um, and there's multiple ways to do this. Of course, we can use some uh, libraries out there, like Yeoman Generator, to build uh, your yeah, your, your component scaffolder. For us, we find that you know, it's just easier to just use like some some node packages like handlebars, uh, template engine, and, uh, and actually within a, like around 100 line of code, we, we can have like very basic components um, generator that helps us to uh, start developing in like less than one minute. So uh, let me give a demo about this. Um, so uh, I already prepared the the report for this. Let me check if it's correct. All right, so we, oh yeah. so we're gonna create a component using our component scaffolder. We uh, for this we can. I'm gonna create a tag component, or someone call it a, a chip. And uh, Luna bootstrapping yes. So this is how our Luna like run through all your package.json, and then try to build sim link between them, and then optimize your, your node modules and stuff. So yes, we already have a uh, component. And of course, our, uh, our component generator are very basic. So we got, now we got this. And let me just... Let me have it here as well. So, yeah, because we only use handlebars, template engine, so, and yeah, of course I'm lazy, so I just, uh, I just don't rename the file yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so from here we we can already start developing our tag component. And uh, yeah, that's it for the demo for generator. The next thing. The real thing about components library, which is a component itself, how do we develop a component? <coughs> What's the problem here? We don't want bad experience. So the first thing we do when we start uh, building our components library, we, uh, we have our components library and our consuming app, our main app, running side by side, locally. Every time we change something here, um, we link the main app to the components packages and by local path 
and then every time we change something in the component, we need to restart the dev server so that it reflects in the main app. So that's how we, we started. But it's just so much um, you know, context switch and, uh, and not to mention that when you develop your component, you don't really focus on your, your component itself. You, you can be very easily distracted by the main app code context or code setup. So what do we need to solve this? We need to embrace component-driven development, right? Uh, what are the benefits of component-driven uh, development? Focusing uh, developing experience. We just want to focus our, on our component. Um, nothing else, like no, no app, no nothing, just the component and its use case. We want a visual test-driven development as well, so we can better cover all our UI cases. Um, it's going to be easier to do cross-team feedbacks. For example, you can show them to your product managers or designers. And of course, the, de um, the components can be developed at the same time. And the number two things that we want to focus here is a doc documentation and a living one. Why? Because as someone has said, code is of often the only thing that we can really trust. Uh, most written documentation is outdated before the project is delivered. That's painfully correct, right? So what do we do to achieve these two things? We have storybook, as a lot of you already heard about. So what is good about storybook? Storybook offers a tool uh, to, to develop a component. So actually, with like hot module loading, and its own demo kind of setup. You can just own what we need to develop our component is Storybook and our code. We can use Storybook as a component explorer as well. So, so our, our designers, our product managers, or even a new co uh, developers can use Storybook to explore the components and know how I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this or like, how it's going to look like in different setup. And of course, that brings us to the next point where we use Storybook as a visual TDD tool. So we can test your component using different layout or different theme like dark theme, uh, light theme. And last but not least, you can use Storybook as a living UI docs because uh, we own a props table auto-generated for you. So yeah. It's it will never be outdated. And let me uh, give you a demo about that. Um, all right, I'm just gonna, I think I need to, this is the result of our uh, component generator. It's, yeah, it's very simple, as I said. So we need to rename something. Attack. All right, and uh, let us see it. And oops, sorry. I think. All right, I already have. Uh, Some example file here, so I'm not I'm not gonna do live coding here, right? So, uh, so let me run storybook, and of course storybook, we use it as a visual TDD tool. So, we are not gonna forget our our real unit test. Oh, sorry. So the test file is also uh, generated from our our. our Generator. Uh, so where do you find? Okay. So this is how it looked like. So you can remember we just we just rename some files, generate our component, and we got this. And now let let's do some coding. Um, let me see. So for this example, I'm using some uh, style components 
to make it easier first um, stories here we go so uh, as you can see here we can use uh, story loop as a common developer tools and of course explorer itself let me see if i have any no oh, oops no no knobs here but yeah you can send some you know some uh, action on click or something it auto pull the the readme file here this is also the default readme file that i'm um, uh, generated from from uh, yeah, from the generator. And we can also tag with, for example, dark mode, how it look like. Oops. We can try light mode here. We can try iPhone 6. How about the smaller phone? Um, so, so that's how we well, let me think. And now our test here of filling our test case are filling. So I'm gonna just copy and paste the last part. Okay. Here we go. So that's how we uh, develop our component. We own the visual TV tool and any test and uh, yeah, the docs, everything. Now get back. Yes, so we have our component. Now we need to uh, view and publish it. I'm not going to go so deep here for, for this part because it's not a focus of, of the components library. But I'm just going to share the two main things, like two main um, Pinpoints that I, f I found out during my uh, learning journey with, with, uh, with common and building. Number one is to be careful with dependencies. Um, why? We, we share a lot of components, uh, dependencies across components like React, prop ties, um, and uh, what can go wrong with this? You can easily build all these dependencies with your component. And then in your in your main app that you consume this, you will have like ten version of React, ten version of prop types, ten version of style components, which is definitely a nightmare, which is the worst, right? So just be careful with dependencies, and just to show you how we do this, um, just have. Uh, I'm just wondering if uh, everyone can see this clearly, or should I zoom in a bit more? Is 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 it good? Yeah. Cool. Okay. So we have this row up plugin peer dependency external. So this is where we pull out all the ex external peer dependencies uh, from our package.json, so that we not we not gonna gonna put it in our bundle and another thing that I find very interesting here is because when you in, when you when you exclude react from your from your bundle prop ties is actually not excluded so hence we have to have a very stupid hack here where we need to exclude prop ties manually um, that's where we can optimize our bundle size and the next thing is, we're going to support both client-side rendering and server-side rendering. Our components need to be very flexible and uh, can be easily reused within our code base. So yeah, ES module for tree shaking ability. That's the main um, kind of advantage that, that you can have when you use ES module. And, and uh, you can use CommonJS or UMD for server-side support. So how about publish? Well, 
this one depends a lot on your company setup and uh, what you want to, to have. So we actually explore between NPM orgs, uh, which is like private NPM package and private Git. And we finally, uh, we decided to go with private Git repo because it's already being used across the team. But we found a problem here because as you can see, all on our own our package are actually the subfolder from the Git repositories. And basically, you, you don't have a direct way to, to publish your, your package, or you, can, you don't have a way to link your package from the sub, uh, subfolders of the repository. But uh, very interestingly, uh, one of a very good friend of mine, <laughs> His name is Wei Yuan Liu. He works as a full stack developer in in, uh, in Viki. He never drinks, but after he drinks a few like wise, he created this sub uh, Git sub path npm package. You can try you can try it out. So it helps you to actually publish your <laughs> your uh, components like from your subfolder. So I'm gonna give you a demo about this. So now we already have. Our component. All right. Uh, uh, no, this here. I'm just gonna do this. So this actually, oops, what's that? Internet here. Okay, basically, I can uh, just give you this. Uh, I already have a backup for that. So by <laughs> by this command, you can just uh, actually publish the npm package from your component folder. So, and I also already have another component ready. I forgot that I don't have internet access. Right, so uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's how we, we can uh, like streamline our components development workflow and then build and publish it. So just to recap, we, we went through the overall structure, develop uh, component generator, the development workflow and build and publish. And we managed to achieve highly reusable and isolated components in a scalable code base structure, uh, we embrace the common driven development and its own of its benefit. And we can maximize productivity by developing our components at the same time. And also we try to minimize costs by choosing the right tools, for example, Learner, Storybook, and also by developing our own tools that is very cheap and simple, but just serve our purpose. And what's next for us, actually, the library, uh, Competence Library enables us to try new things. For example, if you want to try TypeScript, you can just try it with a single package. And then you can just update the build script for that single package. And, and the end result can be easily consumed by the main app without any notice. Um, we can also enhance our storybook to uh, improve the accessibility and snapshot testing, etc. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's all what we got, uh, what I got for today. And thanks and see you again. Uh, you can uh, find me on GitHub, Twitter, and maybe if you visit Rakuten Viki office, you can find me as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, also, 
Uh, I love football so much. So anyone want to play with Rocket 10 VK teams, just let me know. And uh, we can organize some uh, friendly match. Yes, and, and last, last slide, we are hiring. So if you are looking for a back end or full stack uh, position, please scan this QR code or uh, yeah, contact this email address, which is our, our recruiter. So yeah, that's it from me. Thank you.